Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into applications of integrals and go over um, an example for the arc length video series. And basically solve this example, which states, find the length of the arc of the semi-cubical parabola y squared equals x cubed between the points 1, 1 and 4, 8. This is semi-cubical because when you solve for y, it's not exactly x cubed. It's going to be x cubed uh, divided by 2 or x to the 3 over 2. So if you were to graph this type of function, it looks something like this. Let's draw better axes, more straight, that's somewhat more straight. Anyway, so we have y and x right there. Yeah, then this function is when you solve for y, be y to, equals x to the power of 3 over 2. It's something like this. It's not perfectly, uh, it doesn't go up too high, but it is still curved a bit. And the function looks something like this. Well, at this top part is y, x, y equals x to the 3 over 2. But since you have this y squared, it's always positive. And uh, when you square root it, nothing could be negative inside the square root. So this is only for positive x values. So the function actually looks something like this. It's pretty much reflected across. And it's not defined for uh, x is negative. And I'm not going to go in too much into that. Uh, because basically, we're only dealing with this top, top half. So at the point 1, 1. So if you just put 1, 1 squared equals, well, x, uh, 1 cubed, same thing. And then at the point here, which is 4, 8, and you get the 8 basically when you put in 4 to the power of 3 over 2, which equals 2, well, 4 to uh, the power of 1 over 2, that's 2, so it equals 2 to the power of 3, and 2 to the power of 3 is just 2 times 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2 is 8. So we get that part right there. And also at this bottom half, it looks like this. This is pretty much if you were to solve it for y, this equals to y equals negative absolute value of x to the power of 3 over 2. Actually, since you're dealing with, uh, never mind, this is negative x to the power of 3 over 2. Yeah, because it's always x is positive on the right side here. So anyways, it's, it's equal to that because whenever you have, just for completeness sake, so if you have y squared equals to x cubed, then y is equal to plus or minus square root x cubed right there. So that's pretty much how the equation is. And again, the reason for this is because when you square this y, it could be negative, positive, but you don't really know because it's always gonna be positive when you square it. Anyways, let's just now solve for the length of the curve. Yeah, so the curve length we're looking for is pretty much this curved length across like that. And again, we're only going to be dealing with the top half. So dealing with the top half, top half, what we have now. Yeah, dealing with the top half and also recalling. So dealing with top half where y equals 2, x power of 3 over 2. And also if we recall the uh, arc length formula, which I showed in my earlier video, what we have now is... So basically L, the length of the curve is equal to, or the arc is equal to the integral from the one to four, that's the points we're dealing with, x equals one up to four, of square root one plus dy over dx squared dx right here. And then the dy over dx, that's just a derivative. You solve this, this just equals two, put the uh, three over two down, so three over two and then x, and then you, uh, yeah, using the power rule derivatives, you just minus one power there, so that's just one over two. So one, you minus one from the top. So when you plug that inside, we get equals two integral from one to four of square root one plus, here we have three over two. Yeah, three over two, x, this is one half, and then squared, dx right there. This equals 2, integral from 1 to 4. Simplifying this further, 1 plus this 3 over 2, that's going to be 9 over 4 when you put the square root inside, and when, when you square everything. And then the x to the power of 1 over 2 to the power of 2, that just cancels x, just power, just x to the power of 1. 
dx like that. So now in solving this, we use substitution. You know, use substitution rule for integrals. Substitution, and you can see my earlier video on further on this. So we let u equals to this inside of the square root, one plus nine over four x. So then our du is equal to, this is just gonna be, well, derivative, that's just gonna be nine over four, whoops, nine over four dx. Rearrange for dx, dx is equal to four over nine uh, du. So that's what dx is equal to when we, when we uh, switch everything around. And then at x is equal to one, what we have is u is going to be one plus, well, one, nine over four. And use a common denominator, four over four, add these up, that's 13 over four. And then at x equals to four, we have u is equal to one plus nine over four times four, the force cancels, this is one plus nine equals to 10. So it's from there to there. So thus what we have is L is equal to, when you put all together, so this one over four square root one plus nine over four X DX is equal to the integral from the new uh, intervals from 13 over four to 10 because we're changing the variable. This is, uh, this is square root U. I'll just write it as this easier to integrate. So one over two and then du, but again, du, du, there's a four over nine, so let's just put that in front because it's a constant. So four over nine, or I'll just put it here for now. I'll put it out, out of the integral after this, so four over nine, and then du right there. So we could take it out of the integral and solve for, uh, just, yeah, solve for this integral. So we have four over nine, and then we have u, you add, add one to it, so it becomes three over two, and then we put down this constant below, so flip it over to divide by it to so two over three. So that's the integral of that. And then we're evaluating this from basically from 13 over four up to 10. So this equals two when you multiply these constants, let's keep it out of this, it's just a constant, you could take it out. So two times four is eight, so we have eight, and then nine times three is 27 and evaluate this, we get 10 to the power of three over two, minus when you evaluate it, and then 13 over four to the power of three over two. And then, yeah, so now we have to evaluate all this. This becomes eight over 27, and then this 10 to the power of three over two, recall the power function properties. This is just pretty much the same as writing 10 to the power of one plus, plus one half. And then subtract it on this side, this is gonna be 13, and I'll just do the same thing over here. So 13 power of three over two, which is one plus one half. And then the bottom is, this one is pretty much four power of three over two, which we already solved. We already solved above, that's just, well, that's the same thing, that's just eight. So four power of three over two, that's just eight. So this all together, this equals eight over 27. I'm just doing this uh, by hand manually. You can put it in the calculator whenever you want. So I'm gonna simplify it further if we can. So 10, this is the same thing as writing 10 times 10, one over two, or 10 to the power of one times 10 over one over two, and you can add the powers. And when you divide, you subtract the powers. Etc. So now this is going to be 13 times 13 1 over 2. Divide this by 8 4. Uh, yeah, square root 4 is 2, then 2 to the power of 3 is 8, like I showed before. Now the common denominator, I'm going to multiply by 8 and divide by 8. And as you can see, we can cancel this 8 afterwards. So what we're left with 8 times 10 is 80. So this would be 1 over 27. 8 times 10 is 80 and then times it by square root 10 minus, right here, 13 times square root 13. So this is our exact answer. And if you were doing a calculus exam, this says put the exa exact answer, this is the exact answer. You don't have to simplify it further. You don't even need to put in a calculator, but if you want, or you could even probably end up here and you'll be, you'll be done anyways. 
if your calculus book doesn't say to simplify. So if you plug this in the calculator, I'll go over here, I plug this in here in the Google calculator. So 1 over 27 times 80 square root 10 minus 13 square root 13, we get about 7.633705. So let's plug that in, 7.633705, and it keeps going on and on. So this is our, uh, roughly our answer. Now a pretty useful note is basically as a way to double check our answer, we realize from the curve that the distance between the two points should be slightly smaller than the length of the curve. So what I mean by that, if you were to, let's just roughly draw the curve, it looks something like this, y, x, y, and x, and, it, and you can see it curves up a bit because it's power of three over two, which is greater than one, so it curves up like this, it's y equals x three over two, so at this point, this is our four, eight, and then at this point here is our one, one. Let's go a bit higher to make it easier to draw. Yeah, I'm just gonna draw it here, so one, one right here. So the exact di distance across it, which is pretty much just a uh, straight line across like that. So I'll draw it a bit off. So the straight line like this, we'll call this distance D, and this distance we can calculate using Pythagoras. So this length right here, yeah, this, this length across, the difference from there to there, here to here, this one right here is pretty much eight minus one equals seven. And this distance is four minus one equals three. So we're just minusing from the axis, this one from the y's. So this distance should be slightly smaller than the length of the curve. As you can see, it's curved, so you, it's slightly longer than as opposed to going straight directly to it. And thus, to double check, we could solve for d, and again, we could uh, recall Pythagoras theorem. And if we call Pythagoras theorem is just a like this a b c. If you have a right angle triangle, c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. So we can solve for it. So we have in our case d squared is equal to a. We'll call a as this is a, and this is our b. So we have a three squared plus seven squared. So our D is equal to, uh, well this equals to again, nine plus seven squared, that's just seven times seven is 49, which equals to 58. So D, when you square root it, is gonna be square root 58. When you plug this in the calculator, I've already put it here. So square root right here, yeah, so square root uh, 58, that's roughly 7.615. 773, so let's type that in, 7.615773, uh, circle that. And as you can see, this is, well, slightly smaller than the 7.6, 7. 7. let me just go back to it, 7.633705, 705. So I'll go slightly smaller, and this is pretty much shows that our answer is right. Yeah, so writing this down, this shows that the distance D between the two points is slightly smaller than the length of the curve from those two points as it should be, and as you can see, it's just slightly smaller. So anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this pretty uh, useful example on arc length and also how to uh, how to double check it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.